questions, uh, Chief Sun. In your transcribed interview, you mentioned that you met with the House Sergeant at Arms regarding the National Guard prior to January 6th. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And who is the House Sergeant at Arms uh, leading up to and on January 6th? Uh, that would be Paul Irving. And the, the House Sergeant at Arms is appointed by who? I was appointed uh, that, at that time by Speaker Pelosi. And in your transcribed interview, you mentioned that when you first brought up the National Guard to the House Sergeant at Arms in the days leading up to January 6th, uh, that Mr. Irving said he, quote, didn't like the optics, end quote. Is, is that correct? That, that is correct. He, uh, he referenced being concerned for optics. And on January 6th, when he went to Mr. Irving to get his approval to call in the Guard, Mr. Irving said he would, quote, run it up the chain. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. That was a telephone call. I didn't see him in person when I first made that request. The House Sergeant at Arms is considered probably the most senior security official on the House side. Uh, when Mr. Irving says yes to, quote, run it up the chain, end quote, what did that mean? Uh, I took that to mean his leadership chain. And, and who would be his leadership chain? It would if be he's, he's, he's functionally the most senior uh, security official on the House side, correct? That's his, that's his title. That's part of the title, the senior uh, law enforcement official for the House of Representatives. But he would have been referring to the leadership team that goes up to uh, Speaker Pelosi. So the, the political leadership team, meaning, meaning elected officials, not, not another security official, is that your that, that is correct, sir. He's the top security official for the House. So running up the chain would most likely, in, or in your opinion, is, is through the Speaker's office and possibly to Speaker Pelosi? That would be where it end, yes. Okay, so, so let, let's park that there and then let's jump to a, a second set here. Um, in a press conference on January 7th, Speaker Pelosi called for your resignation on national television. Speaker Pelosi also stated that she had not talked to you since the initial breach of the Capitol. But according to your transcribed interview, you were on the phone with Speaker Pelosi a few times. Uh, can you explain that discrepancy? Yeah, that is, uh, that, that is correct. I, I spoke to Speaker Pelosi um, three times uh, that, that evening. And uh, she went on national TV and said I'd never spoken to her. But I spoke to her three times. Um, the three, uh, three times were the first time when I went over to brief uh, President, uh, Vice President Pence at the secure location. Um, I had called uh, um, House Sergeant Arms Irving, told him I was going over to brief the uh, Vice President. I was also going over to do a personal assessment of the Capitol. At that point, things were getting under control. Uh, went over there, briefed him on when we can get them back into chambers with you know, uh, Mr. Irving being fully aware. Uh, he said he wanted to get Speaker Pelosi on the phone. He made a phone call from his cell phone at approximately 534, uh, where I first briefed Speaker Pelosi. Uh, the second call was when I left that location. As I was walking away, I met up with Mr. Stinger, and we started walking over to the Senate to go brief the Senate. When uh, Jennifer Hemingway, I believe it was Jennifer Hemingway, handed me the cell phone, and it was Emily Barrett's cell phone calling her, and it was Speaker Pelosi on the other line. This is my call, second call with Speaker Pelosi questioning the information I'd given to uh, Vice President Pence about when we can get back into chambers. I assured her that information was correct. I could get them back into chambers by 7, uh, 7 p.m., and the call ended. That was call number two. Call number three was 6.25 p.m. I was over at the Senate uh, from the secure location, I mean, from where the Senate had been sequestered, uh, and on a uh, cell phone using Robert Karam's cell phone, they dialed leadership, who was over off-site at a secure location, and I briefed all of the leadership of the plans to get them back into chambers. That would have been call number three with Speaker Pelosi. So you didn't have one call, you didn't have two calls, you had three calls. So Speaker Pelosi's comments that she didn't speak to you are inaccurate. That is correct, sir. 